Now it's my pleasure to welcome our second speaker, uh, Colin McDonald, who is one of our Buchanan Fellows and a double major in aerospace and maintenance management. Uh, he's scheduled to graduate in May of 2017. Colin uh, was among the first of our students to participate in our signature education abroad program, Honors in Italy. And for his honors thesis, he retraced the historic transcontinental flight that Cal Rogers made over 100 years ago. And that is from Long Island, New York to uh, Long Beach, California. Colin's larger purpose, however, was to get more young people interested and involved in aviation. And he garnered quite a bit of public positive publicity not only for his flight but also for MTSU and specifically for the Honors College when he made this when he made this flight which he'll tell you more about. Um, after graduation Colin plans uh, to pursue a career in aviation and to do mission work in Papua New Guinea. So please join me in welcoming Colin. Hello, and uh, it's good to be here today. It's a privilege to get to stand before you and speak um, on my trip. Uh, I actually sat where you guys did, I guess, last semester and uh, listened to these same lectures. So um, before we even get started, just kind of a few tips. Start early and get it done quick. Um, there's a lot of excitement and kind of worries that can come in when you're working on your thesis. And trust me, if something can go wrong, it will. Um, so if you start early, then you'll, you'll be fine. And those of you that are working on it right now, like uh, my brother who just finished up, good job, buddy. So, so uh, my flight, just a little history of aviation. 1903, the Wright brothers um, made the first successful powered flight in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. But after that, aviation more or less stagnated due to patent wars and other things. And the Wright brothers themselves um, for the next five years would struggle at mastering the invention um, that they had made. And this is a picture of Orville Wright after a crash in 1908. And it wasn't until 1911 when the advent of air shows or air meets more or less would allow more people to start getting interested in aviation. Um, this is Cal Rogers. This was the man who had become the first to fly transcontinental across the country. Um, he got his start in aviation by visiting his brother in 1910 at the Wright School of Flying in, Avi or in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it was the first aviation school in America. Um, I actually got to visit the prairie where in the upper right corner um, that little building sits, and there's a replica to this day there. And in August of the same year, he became the 49th certificated pilot in the United States. The VinFizz flight was... Um, so called because J. Ogden Armour of the Armour Meatpacking Company in Chicago sponsored Rogers to attempt to cross the country in 30 days or less for a cash prize of $50,000 that was offered by William Randolph Hearst, who was a newspaper baron at the time. The only stipulation was it had to, the flight had to pass through Chicago. Other than that, the routing was all up to the aviator and he could pick his own route. As you can see, he started off in um, New York there, Long Island, and then worked his way over to Chicago, dropping down all the way to San Antonio. So that way he was on the lower side of the mountains um, as he crossed the Rockies and then followed the border all the way to Pasadena and then Long Beach, California. He not only would have the aircraft, but a, a train to follow him along his way um, with a special car there. And all of it was advertisement by Armour trying to promote this uh, grape drink that they were selling, the Vin Fizz. Um, and on top of all that, the bottom of his plane got painted the Vin Fizz, which is where the name came from. And this is just a photo of him taking off out of one of the cities. That first flight took 49 days. There were 14 major crashes. By the uh, end of the trip, the only two things that would have made the entire trip and not have been replaced along the way was the drip pan for the oil and one of the vertical stabilizers of the rudder. Every other part on the aircraft had been replaced at some point or another, and sometimes multiple times. Um, it was about 1,200 gallons in fuel, 4,200 miles, 
eighteen thousand dollars in parts in 1911 um, and it took 82 hours to cross the country his average speed was 52 miles an hour and he was the first to ever cross the world or cross the United States so a new world record in 2000 and 13, I came to MTSU, um, privileged to receive the Buchanan Fellowship, and by 2014, I'd already started considering what I was going to do for my thesis. The, the last semester of my sophomore year, um, I decided I wanted to do this flight. Um, and you might think, well, that's, that's really early. I could not have completed this flight had I not started that early because it was such a large project. Um, and there's, if I could go back and do it again, there's so many things I would do different. Um, in the way of finding more and more things pertinent to the original flight, but it was a privilege to get to do what I was able to do. Um, so May 19th, just I guess about seven months ago, I left out of Murfreesboro, which is the Blue Dot, headed north to uh, Long Island, and uh, it's got JFK marked. I didn't actually land at that airport. There was another one, but I worked my way following his route, cut back across uh, to Los Angeles and then back to Murfreesboro. Um, this is the initial request for the thesis and um, I had to contact the Smithsonian about the specs for the flight and there's a letter that they sent me on it and um, they were very helpful. Um, don't be afraid to reach outside of the scope of your influence. Um, I found that all sorts of individuals were willing to help financially and with information along the flight. After I had got a list of the airports, I found the modern day locations, and then I went through and listed. Uh, on the left, you have all of the identifiers for your airports, like uh, MDW, I think it's Midway, um, Chicago. And there's also the distance between the previous airport and that one, the estimated fuel and time in a zero wing condition, which is how pilots have to um, plan it. And then there's some notes along the side and kind of what I thought the uh, schedule would be. I originally thought it would take me 18 days to go from here to Los Angeles and then a couple more to get back. Um, it ended up taking 28 days total um, and there was a lot of planning that went into it. That's leaving out of Murfreesboro with a lot of stuff. These are just some photos from that day. Um, but like I said, May 19th, I got ready to leave and this brings up a good point that Dr. Phillips had mentioned as well. The whole purpose of this project was to increase social media, or not social media, sorry, I'm pulling off of you increase the public's awareness of aviation, try to get more young people interested and involved in aviation. Um, the FAA estimated that in 2010, over the next decade, so by 2020, there would be a decline in as much as 90% of private pilot initial applicants. Pretty much what that means is 90% of the people that got their pilot's license in 2010, for that same number, only 10% would get their license in 2020. Um, that's a steep a drop off. There's several reasons for that, including financial, um, the cost of flying, but also the availability and the fact that more and more people are just not interested in learning how to fly. Um, and the photo up top, the reason I mentioned that is there's several news channels that came out and did a, a little blurb about it. And all along the way, I actually had a MTSU um, staff uh, individual who worked with the media, uh, Randy Weller, who would contact people and send packets of information to them about my flight um, and ended up uh, getting a lot of interest along the route. So I flew uh, east to the coast and all I've done is I pulled out a bunch of pictures, some of the best pictures of the flight. That's my plane. Uh, it's a mall. I nicknamed her Molly. Um, it's uh, about 20 years old now and these are just some highlights of the trip. I got to fly into Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, which is where the Wright brothers made their first flight. And this is me standing by the memorials. From there, I would fly up the coast to the Smithsonian, where they have an exhibit on Cal Rogers and the first transcontinental flight and the original aircraft that was used to fly from coast to coast, sporting MT Aerospace right there. So that's probably my favorite photo from the entire trip. I threw this in here because this just shows you um, one of the key things that I wanted to make sure that we took care of when doing this trip was safety. And uh, there's this kind of the middle of the screen where you've got those orange numbers. Right above that, that's my primary navigation. But secondary navigation, I used an iPad with a flight app that we use. Uh, it's fairly common. And then third 
would be in the bottom left corner, you can't see it, but I've got actual hard copy maps that I would be able to use. Um, so safety was critical to making this work. I actually wrote a standard operation and procedure manual for the trip, limiting myself to certain types of flight, certain um, points that I would not fly, or any time a mechanical issue happened, these are the steps I was gonna take to assure that I would have no issues. And uh, it was because of that that I had a successful trip. This was in um, Long Island, New York, Oops, where I started uh, Farmingdale Airport, and from there I would head up towards Elmira, and that was the sunset going into Elmira. I actually got to go to Niagara Falls. Rogers didn't do that, but when he was, he flew into near Rochester. I had friends there, and so the next day they took me to Niagara Falls, and we got to go um, over to the Canadian side and see that. These are just, again, just some highlights. This was coming back down towards Dayton, Ohio, um, in the middle of uh, kind of, I guess it was southwestern New York. I had my first mechanical in issue in Kent, Ohio, which is where Kent University is, which was our competition in aviation um, events when we had a flight team. And then from in Dayton, I got to go by the Air Force Museum and fly a replica of the first Right flyer, that was probably one of the major highlights of the trip was getting to fly in that plane. Um, this is Stephen Wright. It's the great grand nephew of Orville and Wilbur Wright. That's the house that Orville built um, on Hawthorne Hill in Dayton, and uh, that was just a, a little gift from him, thanking me for stopping through and wishing me luck on the trip. I did have to deal with some weather. There was two or three times when uh, I would have to wait a full day and let the weather pass before heading on. This is Kansas City. And I'm having to kind of skim through this for time's sake, but uh, it was a fun trip, and not only did I get to log a lot of time, but I was able to um, gain a lot of experience. Like in this situation, I had a mechanical failure that I had to troubleshoot in Austin, um, and uh, thankfully the people there were able to help me out, and I was back in the air the next day. From there I would fly along, San Antonio that is, I would fly along the coast out towards uh, Los Angeles. And this is just some of the rugged scenery of the Southwest. It took about 80 hours total from Murfreesboro all the way back through to Murfreesboro, uh, over 28 days. And it cost about $2,500 in fuel and uh, ended up having some more um, cost incurred other than that but that was the major part of the trip was the fuel itself I was able to sell t-shirts and get Eureka funding as well as some private uh, scholarships and whatnot to pay for it and there was a lot of donors on a GoFundMe that I used so think outside of the box especially if you're looking at doing a big project it can be done and you can you can make what you thought was an impossibility come true when it comes to your thesis don't just settle for something that, um, you know, is going to be easy. I could have done a lot easier projects than this. This was the actual beach in Los Angeles that Cal Rogers landed on 100 and 100 some odd years ago. And uh, there's the same beach right there. Heading home, I got to cut up through and go to the Grand Canyon. Uh, I'd never been before, and I didn't ever think I would actually fly myself to it, but had a fun time doing that. Like I was saying, um, stretch yourself a little bit when it comes to your thesis. And there's been so many things. I've had job offers come out of the fact that I did this trip. Um, the young lady who I'm currently dating, I met her in Indianapolis while on this trip. We knew her a couple years before that, but um, we got to talking then. And like literally, this trip's changing my life. Um, and. Just some of the stats from it, it took 6,400 miles to cover it. I covered half the states, 87 hours of flight time, thankfully no accidents. Uh, two transcontinental crossings, because I did it both ways, um, going up to New York and then coming back from Los Angeles. I only burned 615 gallons of fuel, which is exactly half of how much Cal Rogers burned um, over the two crossings. So um, engines have gotten a lot more efficient and it took 28 days to cover compared to his 49 days. And this was the photo at Los Angeles when I finally landed um, there. So that's kind of my thesis. And I think we have a 
time for a few questions. So if anybody's got any questions, yes. Were you scared? <laughs> Not really. Um, we did enough preparation and planning beforehand that I honestly I was ready for every circumstance possible, even to the point of engine failures. And um, I'd had 500 something hours flying in that plane, so I was pretty confident that we were going to have a good time. So yes. Yes, sir. Um, two things, um, which uh, I saw you were on a grass strip. Where was the grass strip and how was the landing there compared to some of the others? I love landing on grass. That plane is built for that. Um, it's actually a lot easier to land on grass than anything else. Uh, unfortunately, that was the only grass strip along the entire route, but it was Great Valley in southwest New York was the name of the airport. The second thing, um, You've mentioned this has been huge for PR at the university. I, uh, my dad actually works in aviation back home. And I was okay. wondering if you have this documented anywhere where I can share it with them or news stories yeah, that there's, covered a lot of it. Um, it got, there's, I don't know if you, do you have Facebook? Because yeah. the MTSU shared it several times along the trip. Um, so if you feel like going back that far and looking at May and June, that's when it was shared by the, the university. They shared it several times. Also, if you look up um, vinfizflight.wordpress.com, that's a blog spot that I kept up with it the entire time. And there's a lot of links to other different news yes. sorts from there. Vinfizflight.wordpress.com. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there a simple way of describing some of the technical difficulties you had over there? Because I know you had uh, some. I had a starter hang up on me, which pretty much means in the start sequence, the starter would not retract. And so the gears were grinding against each other. I had to shut the engine down, pretty much take the starter apart, rebuild it, and put it back together before it would work. Other than that, the propeller was a little out of balance one time, but that wasn't a major issue. I fixed that in a few minutes. Um, and other than that, I didn't have any mechanical difficulties along the trip um, compared to Roger's 14 crashes that he had. So that just shows you how aviation improved. And he actually had the guy who helped the Wright brothers build their aircraft with him, and he still had that many issues. So, Yes. Did you go put it by yourself? Yep, solo the entire way. I was actually wanting to take somebody else with me who's currently wearing the international cap in front of you there, but he had a job. So. Sorry, Dylan. Yeah. Is there a lot of like insurance that went into that? Cause, I mean, Not really. Like my standard insurance covered the entire trip. So, aircraft insurance. Is there what? Is there a jet? Is there a jet? Uh, no, you don't need that. Why don't you jump out of a perfectly good plane? Yes. Yeah. Um, so is this an MTSU plane, or did you just rent a plane? No, this is actually my family aircraft. We looked at using one of the diamonds that MTSU has, um, but the insurance was going to be ridiculous, and I was going to have to like rent it for 10 hours. Um, so I opted out of doing that and just went with this. So, yes. Um, so for my thesis, I also did GoFundMe and got Eureka funding and did all that kind of nice. stuff and then uh, had a blog as well. So what was something that you found that really helped to get people involved to be able to donate or get involved with what you were doing and that sort of thing? Just be very active with it. For me, that was the key thing. Um, like I would almost weekly update it, if not more than that. and. Um, I was very vocal to the people who had donated and thanking them and like I would if they were if they had donated and tagged like were on Facebook then I would tag them in a post and share it to their page so that way all their friends see that oh this person has shared uh, for this project as well as I, I would actually like sit out and talk to people and be like hey I'm going across the country doing this and I'm looking to raise money. The main thing that I did though was um, I, I went out and had a company donate a bunch of t-shirts um, that said Vin Fizz across the front and had the map on the back and uh, they donated those for cost and then I sold them for 10 bucks each and that uh, it was like a 75 percent profit for me so that was kind of my way of raising funds for the trip so yes total out of pocket was about 200 bucks and uh, the total cost of the trip yeah. was around around fifty two, fifty three hundred dollars. So, 
Yeah. And that's covering, you know, 25 states and spending 28 days flying. And that includes, like, I had a tent with me trying to cut down on some prices, but I used it like a third of the time. And I was like, I had to get a real hotel and get a bed. So um, other than that, uh, like, lodging was about the most expensive thing outside of fuel. And between the two of those, that was about $4,500. And so, yeah. but I got to see a lot of the country, and it was a really fun trip. Really thankful I could represent the Honors College and MTSU and get my thesis done all at the same time. So. Thank you.